privilege escalation with power up um we're going to be beginning with uh or by taking a look at some privilege escalation scripts uh or other scripts or tools that can be used to quickly identify or automate the process of identifying privilege escalation vulnerabilities uh in windows or in windows systems so we're going to be starting off with the infamous power up which is part of the powersploit um collection of powershell scripts um, so let's get a you know proper introduction to power up so what is power up uh, well po power up is a popular tool or rather powershell script um, that um, is used uh, to essentially automate the process of identifying privilege escalation vulnerabilities and misconfigurations in uh, windows uh, systems or windows environments and as some of you may know, it is part of the Powersploit framework, which is a collection of PowerShell based tools or scripts uh, that again are designed for offensive security tasks, uh, including enumeration, exploitation, and uh, post-exploitation activities, namely uh, privilege escalation. So PowerUp is just one of these scripts that again is part of a larger collection of Powersploit scripts or tools uh, that is specific to identifying privilege escalation vulnerabilities. So that's the best way to think of it. So it uh, primarily focuses on identifying common privilege escalation vectors or vulnerabilities within Windows environments. And uh, it automates the process of scanning a Windows system for potential misconfigurations, vulnerabilities, and security flaws that could lead to potential privilege escalation. And uh, it does this by performing a comprehensive set of checks to identify opportunities or um, you know vectors for privilege escalation, uh, escalation such as you know uh, insecure service configurations. These are services uh, running with elevated privileges, for example, the system privilege uh, in Windows that are vulnerable to exploitation due to weak permissions or other security issues. It also checks for unquoted service paths. Uh, these are services with unquoted paths that can be exploited by placing a malicious executable in a strategic location or by replacing the original executable uh, for a particular program or service. Um, it'll also perform you know, checks for weak registry permissions. Uh, this refers to registry keys with insecure permissions that can allow unauthorized modification leading to privilege escalation. Uh, vulnerable scheduled tasks. So these are scheduled tasks that can be manipulated to run with elevated privileges and really manipulated by any uh, user account or a standard user account without elevated privileges. You then of course have the classics like insecure file permissions. So this involves checking for files or directories with weak permissions that could be exploited to execute code with higher privileges. You then have, of course, the insecure DLL search orders. So these are exploitable DLL search orders that allow DLL hijacking to gain elevated privileges. And of course, the classic stored credentials, which is the example we'll be taking a look at in this video when we get started with the lab. But, you know, it'll essentially perform checks for locally stored credentials uh, in registry keys, files or other locations uh, or common tools like the credential manager uh, on Windows. Um, with that being said, as I mentioned, this video uh, has a lab environment associated with it. And what we're going to be doing is uh, using the lab environment to learn more about how to use PowerUp uh, to identify privilege escalation vulnerabilities in Windows. And uh, the lab environment is just going to be below this video. And you can choose to go through the video first or through the lab because it has its own documentation that will essentially be what we're covering in the video, but I'll take a few different, uh, um, I'll make a few, uh, or I'll use a couple of different techniques that may uh, differ, so do keep that in mind. Uh, the lab environment will provide you with access to a Kali Linux system and a target system, which is running Windows, and this will be useful for a couple of reasons, and you'll see why. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to start up the lab environment, and I'll see you there in a couple of seconds. All right, so I'm in the lab environment, and as you can see, uh, you will be provided with your target machine IP address, which will be unique to your lab, uh, because the target IPs and, and consequently your Kali Linux IP will be assigned uh, dynamically or randomly, and each IP address, uh, whether it's the target one 
uh, or your Kali Linux IP address will be again unique to each lab instantiation. So the point I'm trying to make is if you restart the lab again, you're going to get a different target IP. So for the purposes of this demonstration, if you're following along, make sure to replace your lab's IP with um, or rather my IP with your lab's IP when following uh, along. Uh, and uh, likewise for any other attempt or any other run through the lab. Um, the other thing you'll realize is that, uh, you know, pretty much what I mentioned in the slides, we have access to a Kali machine and uh, the attacker machine, uh, which is a Windows system that, again, we are going to be using to, again, demonstrate the, um, the process of using power up to identify privilege escalation vulnerabilities. So uh, the, the user that you have access to by default is a user called student. This is a standard user account that, again, is not elevated in any way and I'm just going to increase my font size here for the PowerShell terminal or window. Uh, we'll give this a few seconds and uh, hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm doing a little bit better. There we are. So I'll just maximize the window and uh, now uh, you can see I'll just confirm this. So who am I? We're currently a student and if I say uh, net local group administrators you can see that only the administrator user is a part of the local administrator group. Furthermore, I can also verify, you know, um, my current privilege set, and I'll ex be explaining this in another video, but if I say, who am I priv, you can see we don't have any of the privileges, you know, the Windows privileges you'd associate with an elevated session. So there's two ways you can go about um, following along with the demo. Uh, you can gain access via the Kali Linux system, maybe through something like uh, the web delivery module in Metasploit, and then just paste in uh, the uh, the actual PowerShell payload and then get a meterpreter session, and then you can follow through if you want a more traditional approach. But we are going to be working from the position or the point where we're assuming that we've already gained access to this system. And again, for the purposes of this demonstration, let's just assume we have a PowerShell a reverse shell or you know we're using PowerShell through meterpreter or we have an RDP session. Really doesn't matter. The objective is still the same. We want to elevate our privileges. So. Um, if you check the desktop on the attacker machine or on the Windows system, you're going to see we have the PowerSploit folder on the desktop here. And uh, within this folder, this is essentially the entire uh, collection of PowerSploit PowerShell scripts. You can see we'll have the Privesk folder, which will contain PowerUp. So to get started, I'm just going to navigate to my desktop here in the PowerShell uh, window. And uh, I'm just going to navigate into PowerSploit and uh, Privesk. And uh, there we are. So first things first, uh, we can see that we have a standard PowerShell script powerup.ps1 and then the modules are right over there. So um, in order for this to work, uh, what we want to do is, or well, the first step is to pretty much import uh, PowerUp. And uh, the way we can do this, well, firstly, we need to actually set the execution policy to bypass so we don't get any warnings. So I'll just say... Um, uh, I can just say PowerShell, uh, the execution policy is bypass, and uh, we'll just hit enter, um, give that a few seconds, there we are, and now I will uh, import uh, PowerUp, and uh, then we can invoke the uh, Privesk audit function, once we have imported, so I'll just say PowerUp, like so, um, and in this particular case, we want uh, PowerUp, uh, one moment. So hold on a second. So we're under Privesk. Uh, we should have power up. There we are. So yeah, I'm just going to say uh, power uh, up dot ps1, and uh, I'm just going to hit enter. In this particular case, uh, it's not recognized. Uh, we're just trying to import it. So um, just hold on a second. And uh, let me just hit enter. So yeah, I just hit the. I specified uh, that incorrectly, so there we are. So we can now say um, invoke, uh, I'm just going to clear that there. So invoke um, Privesk audit. So I'm just going to say uh, Privesk uh, audit. That's the uh, that's the function um, that we get with PowerUp. And it essentially will do what I've been explaining, or what I've explained thus far. It'll automatically search for uh, local privilege escalation vulnerabilities uh, on this Windows system. And I'm just going to hit enter now and uh, give that a few seconds. So I'm just going to hit enter and I'm just going to see whether it gives me any output. Um, 
so it should actually take a few seconds to a couple of minutes but i'm just going to get back to you when this is done running all right so i didn't have to wait long before we found a couple of these um privilege escalation vulnerabilities more specifically uh, we were able to find that there was a use of uh, clear text credentials here for the administrator user. So that uh, looks like it's going to be our vector. Now, as I said, we'll be exploring how to use or what other privilege escalation vulnerabilities PowerUp can uh, can actually, you know, uh, inform us on or tell us about. But for now, given that this was the only privilege escalation vulnerability um, on the uh, on this particular system that's what we're going to use so we have administrator credentials and now uh, there's multiple things that we can do um, and uh, just before we proceed uh, the, the way this works or the checks that um, previous audit or power up is doing here are very simple it's um, it's pretty much uh, checking specific uh, registry keys so if i say for example a reg query and uh, then say HKLM, um, and we can say under software, um, and then Microsoft, uh, let me type that in correctly, Microsoft uh, Windows, and actually we want Windows NT, um, and then we can say current um, version, and then uh, we can see whether we have um, Win logon. So these are just uh, win logon or logon passwords that have been stored in clear text. And I'll just uh, hit enter. Um, just hold on. Uh, looks like I specified the incorrect. Uh, ah, yeah, my bad. I forgot to specify what we're looking for. User, default username. There we are. And then we can check for the password. Same, um, same registry key. We can just set. Uh, search or look for default password um, and again these are being stored in the registry without any encryption so we get them in clear text so that's how you would have found that vulnerability manually whereas uh, with uh, power up we're able to get that relatively quickly so question still is what can we do now or how can we leverage these credentials to again elevate our privileges well as you know there's a couple of options we can perform a pass the hash attack where we authenticate via PSXEC using these credentials and get an elevated session. So, for example, um, you know, if I copy this here and we go back into the Kali Linux system and I open up, you know, a terminal, let's see if we have PSXEC.py. Indeed, we do. Um, I can just type in, you know, administrator at, um, in this particular case, uh, 10, the target IP 417. In your case, it will be different. So I'll just hit enter um, and then I'll put in the password in here, which I'd uh, just uh, copied. There we are. And uh, we get a session um, via PSXEC. So I'll just uh, increase the font size so you can see it there. And uh, I'm able to confirm that we have administrative privileges or we've elevated our privileges because we were able to, again, find a writable share and then upload the file, um, you know, create the name pipe and then start the service uh, only the administrator has those privileges so i can say who am i and you can see nt authority system which is the highest privilege on a windows system and uh, you can see that if i say who am i priv i should now have all the privileges associated uh, with that particular uh use all that privilege set so there we are here's the privilege set and you can see i can pretty much do anything to the system so windows privileges the individual privileges allow granular control over privilege assignment and allocation to user accounts on windows so you can assign you know a particular uh you can assign a particular privilege to a user account like for example if you wanted to provide them with the ability to you know, create a page file. This is the privilege right over here that you would uh, assign to that user, but that's beyond uh, the scope of this video. Uh, there's also a couple of other options we can explore. So for example, um, we can utilize the uh, the run as command. So if I say right over here, um, let me just um, say run as uh, .exe and then the user is going to be just administrator and uh, we'll say we want to launch um, let's say CMD and this is now the you know proper local privilege escalation where we're currently on the system via RDP but if I hit enter that should ask us for the password for the administrator and if I uh, 
paste that in there um hold on let me just copy it one more time um, remember that you have to right click in powershell to copy or paste so we'll try it one more time and uh, i'll just uh, paste that in there there we are so we now get an elevated command prompt session you can see it's currently as administrator and i can now say you know who am i hopefully you can see that but there we are administrator not anti-authority system that's the disadvantage with this technique uh, but um, again, I can also use the PSXEC technique to gain um, the PSXEC module in Metasploit to gain a direct meterpreter session um, as opposed to using impacts implementation of PSXEC. Um, but uh, what can we do with this type of access? Um, well, you know, one example is, for example, uh, and I hope to be, I uh, hate to be repetitive, but uh, let's go ahead and uh, terminate this session here. I'm just going to open up MSF console in quiet mode. So give that a few seconds. And we're going to use the uh, the HTA server module uh, to create a uh, HTA payload and host it. So I'm just going to search for HTA uh, server. And there we are. We're going to use um, the module zero, like so. And uh, now um, yeah, we can just hit exploit. We'll use the default 32-bit interpreter module. Um, so we have the link to where the HTA is being hosted, which is just on the Kali Linux system. And uh, now, um, you know, we can pretty much go into Windows and use mshta.exe. So if I just say copy this URL here and I go into the attacker machine within the elevated command prompt session because it's going to elevate commands. So it's going to execute commands under the privilege set it's working under, which is administrator. So I can say mshta.exe which is the executable responsible for, again, executing HTAs. So I'll just paste in that URL there. And uh, now if I go back into the Kali Linux system right over here, um, there we are, we get, uh, it's going to deliver the payload and we should get a interpreter session with admin privileges. And uh, yeah, so it's entirely up to you how you want to go through this lab. You can gain access to the attacker machine or to the target system first via let's say the same technique using HTA server as the user student and then use the native interpreter PowerShell um, shell to essentially do what we did with uh, PowerUp and uh, the process would you know pretty much remain the same but there we are uh, we get a interpreter session and if I now say sessions right over here and you can see we currently have a session as the user administrator and if I say uh, you know get privs uh, we have all those privileges there so that is uh, or that brings us to the end of the practical demonstration section of this video